to start with a quote, uh, you probably know uh, this quote quite well. Uh, it, the quote is, uh, economy first, you fool. Uh, you probably recognize this quote. It was very famous in the world. Uh, yes, economy is important. Economy is an engine. Uh, of the social political changes in the world, but we should look at the economy from different angles, from the political angle, social angle, mm -hmm. um, different kind of angles in order to have a real understanding. And uh, Ukraine is the best example at the moment, <coughs> because if you are talking about economy in Ukraine, about the changes in Ukraine, we need to put the things in the context of the uh, ongoing war in, in, the, in the East, annexation of Crimea, the policy of Russia, which is trying to destabilize Ukraine, but not only Ukraine, but in general the Eastern Partnership countries. And we have to remember that just economy, it is not the, the only tool which should be able to counterbalance this destabilization effect maintained by, uh, by Putin's Russia. Uh, but there are some optimistic signs. According to the recent statistics, the Ukrainian economy is growing. It's not uh, very spectacular growth, but it's growing and it's a good sign. It's a sign that uh, there is a breakthrough simply. Uh, since January the 1st, with one year delay, Ukraine will be implementing the CFTA, the Free Trade and Comprehensive Agreement, which is very, very important because in this agreement there is about 60% of uh, Akiko Minister and it's also a free trade uh, with EU. It is uh, what Moscow is trying to stop. Uh, it was uh, just a few weeks ago, it was a meeting between uh, uh, Russian uh, politicians, EU and Ukraine, and it was related to the implementation of the CFTA. Uh, uh, and uh, the European Commission tried to explain to the, the, to the Russians that it, it's not a disaster for the Russian economy, but there was no, no consensus, there was no result of this meeting, and probably the next meeting will take place soon. But uh, there is a statement uh, coming from, uh, from Kremlin that uh, Russia will, will impose uh, some sanctions on Ukraine and uh, Russia is at the moment uh, is not a provider of, uh, of gas for Ukraine, it stopped cut off the, the gas for Ukraine. Uh, I must say that all this uh, information coming from, uh, from <coughs> Moscow, they are not very bad for Ukraine, because it shows that there is no way out. Ukraine needs to concentrate on trading with the European Union and with the closer integration with the, with the European Union. And uh, this uh, info coming uh, about the, the sanctions on Crimea from the Ukrainian side, it, it proves that there is an understanding among the, among the Ukrainian elite that uh, the only way is just to, to stick to the, to the values and uh, to the priorities of the country. The priority of the country is to integrate with, uh, with European uh, market. Of course, it is not an easy process. Uh, talking about 
Polish perspective, Warsaw perspective on this issue, uh, for Warsaw, Ukraine was always the top priority. Poland was one of the first countries which recognized the independence of Ukraine. Some people used to say that Canada was the first, but I think that because of the time difference, it was Poland which was the, which was the first. <laughs> but uh, we are the neighbors and we share also not a border, but we also share the same tradition, the same history. Sometimes it was a difficult history, but basically we believe that there is no safe and prosperous Europe without democratic and free Ukraine. Uh, in the last couple of days, our new president, Andrzej Duda, paid a visit to, uh, to Ukraine. And according to the, uh, to the statements and information in the media, uh, he promised to set up a special, special loan uh, for, um, for, for Ukraine. It's uh, two billions of uh, near, uh, two billions of uh, euros for, for Ukraine. What is quite significant and it is important. And uh, there were also talks uh, about uh, uh, helping Ukraine. Uh, with gas, uh, and I think that it is the same with Slovakia, that uh, so-called Peremichka interconnector uh, in Slovakia and in Poland will be working for, for supplying the lacking uh, gas to, um, uh, to Ukraine, although at the moment the magazines, gas magazine storages in, in Western Ukraine are full of, of gas, so maybe it will not be even needed more gas. It depends on, on how hard this winter will be this year. Uh, but uh, it looks that there is an interest in uh, Warsaw in support uh, for the reforms. Uh, definitely one of the most important issues is decentralization and uh, uh, Poles would be really happy to, to help with, uh, with uh, implementing or finalizing the decentralization in, uh, in Ukraine. It's still not done, it's still a lot of things to be done in this regard, but uh, it's not the case that the Polish uh, model should be implemented like it was implemented in Poland. The situation in Ukraine is different and we, we fully understand. Uh, talking about, about our paths of transformation, uh, Poland managed to, to transform its economy. Uh, it was a kind of shock therapy uh, because uh, it was a time in the uh, late 90s um, that uh, in, uh, Polish standard of living was even lower than in Ukraine. After the, after the martial law in Poland, when it was embargo and when the communist economy was shrinking, uh, so the standard of living in Ukraine was higher. And I remember from my young years that uh, Poles were coming to Ukraine in order to, to buy some, uh, some stuff. Now, there is, in reverse, the Polish economy is doing quite well and the Ukrainians, they are now having a problem. And the problem is also related to the whole process of transformation. In Poland, it was more, more uh, let us say, liberal in sense of, uh, of the Western standard, uh, it was Leszek Barcerowicz who was the deputy prime minister and he was responsible for, uh, for this um, uh, transformation. In Ukraine, it was, um, it, it was a different kind of case. It was a kind of wild privatization and uh, it was a built up of the oligarchic system, which is still in place, unfortunately. Maybe it's not so significant like it was under Yanukovych or under the Orange uh, at its, its latest stage, 
but uh, it is uh, it is this problem, and uh, because of this oligarchy structure, um, the corruption is a part of the issue. I'm not saying that there is no corruption in Poland. I'm not saying that there is no corruption in the European Union. But the level of corruption, because of this oligarchic clientelism, is much higher than in our countries. And in order to succeed in economic reforms, Ukraine needs to find a way to fight corruption. Uh, it's not easy. I know that international monetary funds, the American politicians, they were just appealing to the, to the Ukrainian government to, to set up um, effective anti-corruption policy. It's coming, it's, it's a slow process, it is not like that. We know how difficult it is and we also know how easy it is for Mr. Firtas, who is under the house arrest in Austria, to influence through money and through his, uh, uh, let's say, uh, clients, the political situation in, in Ukraine. Uh, the oligarchic system is still in, in place, and uh, if we are thinking about uh, democratic, liberal um, economy, we need to uh, to find uh, a solution and. Uh, in my understanding, the part of the solution is decentralization. It is what happened in Poland, uh, that uh, decentralization and uh, the reform of uh, fiscal reform, reform of tax, like it was already said by our Slovak colleagues, is a way to limit the scale of corruption. If the monies are not sending back to Kiev, like it was and still is to some extent process. Uh, and if these monies will be left in the regions, it helps to control the flow of money and it's much more difficult to steal this money. Uh, so the decentralization reform is one of the important weapons, instruments to limit and to fight the, the corruption. Uh, the another issue is the uh, Russian factor. Russia is trying all the time to just to destabilize the country, and so Russia has a very powerful uh, weapon, which is called energy. So it is the reason why for Ukraine it is very important to to construct its own energy security policy with some help of the, of the EU and the neighbors. Uh, when I visited, a couple of years ago, when I visited in Brussels DG Energy, they told me that uh, the experts in DG Energy, but it was uh, confidential at that time, uh, that uh, Ukraine could export to, to EU electricity because uh, in Ukraine you have uh, the nuclear power plants and it's, uh, they are sometimes working on half of uh, its capacity. So the problem is with the grid, with, with a kind of interconnector uh, to, 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 trans, to transmit the energy to, for example, Poland. And uh, there is a concept, and I understand that it, it, was, also, um, it was also raised at the time of the President Duda's visit to to Ukraine that uh, Poland would be interested in buying electricity from, uh, from Ukraine. And even Poland were interested in investing in one of the, of the um, nuclear plants uh, in, uh, in Ukraine. So another issue to save the energy is energy efficiency policy. Uh, thermal isolation uh, and uh, of the public buildings, schools, um, and energy saving measures. Uh, it is what uh, my foundation is doing in, in Ukraine. Uh, it can create a new situation because if 
uh, Ukraine will be able to be sustainable in regard of energy. So it means that Russia will be unable to use to use this most powerful instrument in plenary against uh, against Ukraine. And I think that the process has just started and there is another new partner coming on the board. Turkey. Because after the bombing, shelling the, uh, the, the, the Russian bomber by, 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 the, by, by the Turks, uh, Russians um, established uh, kind of uh, punishment uh, uh, for Turkey uh, food, Turkey products, and it looks that it opens the way for closer cooperation between Ukraine and Turkey. And it's also very interesting because uh, Turkey is a candidate, EU candidate, uh, candidate for the EU membership. Uh, Ukraine signed the association agreement and uh, I truly believe that uh, rather sooner than later in the membership perspective will be quite obvious that one day after implementing the um, association agreement and the CFTA <coughs> will be successful, the, the Brussels politicians will decide to, to open the window of opportunity and, and to show to Ukrainians that uh, they could be the, the, the members of the, of the EU. So we have the new options on the table and uh, it looks that uh, it's much more promising.